see people use for a sporting rifle. When we call it an M4, the only difference is it's select fire. It's got safe and semi-automatic, and these also have a fully automatic function on it, which means you hold down the trigger, it's just gonna keep shooting until you run out of ammunition. Um, really isn't uh, a lot different because you gotta really hold on to it. Most time everything we do in training is, is semi-automatic. There are a few rare instances where it might come into something else. Um, most of these have some kind of optic on them, like this, these are the uh, aim points. You got the aim point, and he has the, the EOTech, yep. where it looks like you're playing modern warfare or something like that when, you, when you're using it. We have a light on here too, so we can illuminate our target so we can identify what we're, what we're dealing with. Um, some of these have the longer barrels, some of the newer ones like his have the shorter barrels, it's easier to maneuver inside, especially getting it in and out of the car. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty good, some of these are pretty old, but they keep, you can take care of them, you know, it's like a Ford or Chevy, depending on who you talk to. <laughs> It'll last forever, so. All right. Everybody's got foams in, in their ears. learn to control it so when you hold it down it's not going to just dump the entire magazine all by itself you can control it on how many rounds by how long of it you can pull down the trigger you can three to four round burst rate. Ring tot. Semi-automatic. One round fires. Okay, put the auto and try to get us one round. This is hard. You try to fire one round with it on full auto. You gotta be quick. Alright. Right. This is on full auto. Let's look at a 30 round magazine. Alright. This is up with a full 30 round. You're going to try to hold it on that target, that center we put up there, and try to keep it all on that center. Watch his body rock up when it fires it. He doesn't play enough to hold on to it. It's a little easier for him, in case you hadn't noticed. Alright. itself is a FN uh, model. We have a Night Force NSX uh, scope on it. it. I can see out to easily out to about 600 yards with it. Where it's still a real clear picture. Once it gets up on it, it starts getting smaller. Um, <coughs> he was asking me. I've been to a basic sniper course through the National Tactical Officers Association. I'm getting ready to go to an advanced sniper course down in Oklahoma this fall, and then uh, supposedly another one in next spring. Um, the snipers is where military snipers are shooting this. Mm -hmm. the, they're, sh they're going for bodies, the body shots and all that. Um, it, the easiest way to think of it is at 100 yards, I have to be able to put three three shots in a one inch square, one by one square. And at 200 yards, it's two by two square. We're shooting for this much of the, the face. So that's, we're, we're not, they, you know, they refer to us as precision long range marking, is what the actually our technical title is. Um, because that's what we're doing, we're used for precision shooting. Um, this, our rounds are made not to come out, but I don't know, they're ready to use it, so hopefully I never do. Um, I don't know what he wants me to do. <laughs> what am I shooting for? Little guy. The little man. Little man. <laughs> Uh, no pressure, three rounds in. Down here.
being up to about 300. Yeah, it's a 300 meter, 300 meter simulation. 300 meters? Yeah, that's about what a, what a target, that target looks like, 300. 300. So, so, I got to sell them. Um, so you can imagine one inch, one inch by one inch square at 100 yards is what we're trying to shoot. The, uh, not to dime him out too much, the other rifle actually shoots a little better. They come proof from the, uh, from the factory. That rifle itself, mechanically, without human error, is capable of a quarter minute of angle or one quarter inch at 100 yards, about the size of a dime. Um, the other rifle that came to us from FN Herstal, the factory proof was 0.17 of an inch, is what the, the rifle is mechanically capable of. Everything else is just dealing with the environment, the wind, the temperature are coming off of the deck, um, and the operator. So, and I've only been doing this for about six months, six, seven months. Six, seven months. Oh, wow. Really? He's the junior sniper. The senior yeah. sniper will take 100 yard shots on this big B-27 from the bumper of his car yeah. on Glock 17. Yeah, he can, he can, <laughs> he's really weird. We yeah. keep him under the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. He, can, he, can hit the side, he can hit dead center of the head from 50 yards, which is this line back here with his Glock with no support or nothing. Uh, he's, he's special. <laughs> he's, he's a special guy. Yeah, he's, he's a secret weapon. He's the super weird one. He's the super weird one. He's the more socially, the more socially, the socially acceptable, acceptable one here. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to place up our gear, get all, all squared away. More than just the machine guns and the black vest, we have the tactical team that does the perimeter containments, uh, hostage rescues, high risk warrant services, high risk uh, warrant arrests, things like that, for instance. And then Tech Torkelson and his group to have seven trust negotiators. That's the negotiation team. They operate in this forward compartment up here. So they've got their office space and trying to race boards and their computers and their rescue phone. We're doing negotiations where it can be recorded, people can be listening in. The tactical team commander back here can plug into this unit and be able to listen in the back end. So we can have the commander back here with the radio banks and have the extras in there. Negotiators can be talking to, to people, whether it be a suicidal person or somebody who's taken a hostage. And then the commander can run it overall between the, the liaison and the team leader, the negotiators, and the SWAT team. And we can also use the vehicle to deliver the SWAT team there, give some of them breaks at a time, to deep breaks. We have great consultants and psychologists and doctors, family members to listen to what's going on. And it allows us to keep all our equipment on these roll up doors on the outside. So that way, if you're in a very important, critical part of this negotiation, trying to talk to this person, they're not hearing, overhearing accidentally two SWAT officers talking about which type of gas rounds we're loading into the grenade launcher. <laughs> <laughs> that could be kind of counterproductive. Yeah. <laughs> so, I want to talk a little bit about what you guys do up here in the truck. Right clear. Left clear. Center clear. All clear. All right. Okay. That's it. All right. You know, because the bad guys aren't going to know they're coming, mm -hmm. ideally, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Clear. Wow. That's <laughs> what people call a flashbang. It's about a little over one million candela light and 115 to 120 decibels at six feet. And I don't remember how many PSI, like five PSI of overpressure. So it's a small controlled explosion of flash powder on the inside. The outer part's designed to hold that pressure, not fragment. It's got ports on the top and then a the big port on the bottom to give the flash a light and give a real loud noise. So it's gonna make your, without putting your fingers in your ears, you're gonna hear that for a while. And everything's gonna flash over white. You're not gonna see anything for a few seconds to a minute or more. It has on occasion had a tendency to cause people to urinate, defecate, um, curl into the fetal position, um, and sometimes completely black out as far as what's going on for a minute or two. A lot of times if we have to use these for real high risk scenarios. We don't do it every time. Um, armed gang members, something like that. A lot of times the first knowledge they have that the SWAT team has been there is when they realize that they're on their floor in zip ties with a bunch of black ants standing around them and they don't know how they got there. Which is great for us because we don't get shot. Um, so it's not something we use just on, on everyday random deals, just on the important ones, and it's more dangerous ones. <coughs> so that's what it is. So it's going to be bright, it's going to be loud, okay, and you're going to feel a, a thump in your chest a little bit, all right? So make sure you're somewhere where you're, you're good, make sure your fingers are in your ears. We're going to do it.
Everybody stare at it. <laughs> no, seriously, stare at it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, so you get the full. Yeah, you want to You want to It's not going to hurt your eyes. We'll leave you out. You see that white flash a little bit, then that'll go away. I'm going to give you a little light right here so I make sure you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to catch anything on fire. All right, we're good. Let's go back to the phone board. All right, are you ready? When he comes, we're off. Are you ready? Player. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I looked at it. Uh, <laughs> I see that little green. You look around, you kind of still see it falling in the air a little bit. Now, that seems fairly harmless, right? But if you at three o'clock in the morning you've been smoking way too much weed and you're staring at the blue screen left over when your movie ended, you don't know it's coming, and all of a sudden your door pops open and that lands, you're like, what the heck is that? Whoa. <laughs> so it's all it's a lot more effective. When you you know it's here, so you're prepared for it. When you don't know it, it has odd reactions with people. So I'm gonna let that cool off a minute before I pick it up. So so that's what a flashbang actually does, what it sounds like. So. These are actually pretty mild too. The old, yeah, the other ones we used to use made a lot of smoke and they were a little louder. These are a lot safer. We don't catch houses on fire with these near as often as the other ones, you know, stuff like that. Um, that we all make sure we always have a fire extinguisher handy when we do stuff like this, just to just to make sure. So and that's a little scorch mark on the concrete. Any questions about how that works? Yeah. What's it made out of? It's flash powder. It's basically aluminum powder and gunpowder. I'm not sure what all else they put in it. Uh, it's similar to what you use in fireworks, and it's just a little plastic, clear plastic test tube looking thing. And so a, a same kind of mechanism like you use on a, on a hand grenade, a second and a half fuse, and it detonates the flash powder inside, just like what you use in commercial fireworks. So it's just a whole lot of it. <coughs>